So I'm right in the middle of decorating for the Matsumoto project. It's still quite a mess in here, but what I love about this master bath is the character, but also the simplicity. You've got a lot of white subway tile going on. We've got these checker floors that I think are really cool, but I wanted to balance all that out with a natural wood. I really like the design of this vanity because it felt like something that I'd find at a flea market where you've got all these drawers, but the good thing about it is it's really functional. So obviously, you have all this space for your towels, but on the outside, it looks like one really cool piece. Another thing I like about this master is this really simple ledge that we added on top of the vanity. This wood ties into what we have going on here. We had some simple mirrors made that we mounted, but they actually lean. So this bathroom really came together. A really cool vanity, and then obviously this really cool ledge that ties into the wood. You top it off with some custom mirrors, and there you go. You've got a cool, updated bathroom. You know, I try to design my clients' homes to be a reflection of their style and personality. When you're designing for two people with very different tastes, as in the case of the whites, it can get a little tricky. I would say the entryway was the most challenging part in this house because I really wanted them to walk in and feel like it was reflective of both of them. So I needed to blend both of their styles, traditional style with rustic style. I added this chair wheel here that has a, a traditional look, but it's not too formal, very simple. It adds some texture to the space, but it also really makes it feel warm and inviting when you walk in. It's nice because the walls don't feel so flat, but it's still at a space where you feel like it draws the walls out, but you still have room for artwork. But my favorite thing about this entryway is definitely the stairwell. The original stairwell was really dated. It was almost too traditional. So we ripped it all out and I designed this new stairwell that I just feel like has a little bit of a modern flair to it. It's super unique. And I just think it really sets the tone right when you walk in. When designing with the coastal theme for the Armoyan project, I didn't want to go too literal with it. So I used simple, thoughtful details to tie it all together and keep the design relaxed and calming, not overwhelming. I really love how quaint and cozy it is in here. The color on the walls I decided to use was a lighter blue gray tone but it still has that fresh, clean way about it. When you're trying to carry on a theme, you can keep it subtle. We have the sand and these really cool hurricane jars, fun little glass things with seashells. My client loves shells, the lamps with the rope, but also this driftwood that we found um, here in Waco. It's stuff like this that I think even though we're in Texas, you can still have what you want. Let's check out the master bathroom. I really like this bathroom because it's not overbearing. There's a lot of texture going on and a lot of dimension, but it's not too much. I love these fun pendant lights that we chose, these rotating mirrors. We use a really light palette in here, softer gray on the floor. One of the things I love the most in this bathroom is this new shower that we got for our clients. We've got this really cool basket weave on the wall and then we have these fun pebbles on the floor. We've made their shower twice as big, but with this glass and all this texture, I just really feel like it makes a huge statement in this bathroom. What I've found is that something as common as spilled milk can turn into a rich moment with my kids. And for years, my misguided perfectionism robbed both them and me of those moments. And I can't help but wonder how many other moments I robbed from my kids and from my husband while trying to attain some vision of a perfect home that I was never going to attain anyway. Before my slipcover revelation, I never allowed the kids to paint or do projects on my dining room table because it was my favorite table. Today, not only do I let them do their projects there, but I'm the one who instigates it. Okay, we're gonna paint, kids. Why? Because I replaced that perfect table with the one that's all scuffed up and only gets better looking with age. I also tried to set aside various spots throughout the home where my kids were expected to make a mess in the living room, on that table I just mentioned. I even carved out a spot in the kitchen where they could cook and have fun experimenting with food. That way I could be prepared, which means I wouldn't overreact. 
and that in turn meant my kids could be kids and I could be a better mom. It was all connected. The funny thing to me is that whenever we had people step foot into our house after that, they seemed more wowed by it than any other house I designed or lived in, including the 1920s dream house in Castle Heights. That got me thinking about the pressure we women and moms are all under these days. It seems as if the standards are so much higher than they were a few years ago, mainly because of what we see whenever we look on the internet. It used to require some effort to feel like an inferior mom and wife. A woman would have to go to a newsstand and spend $6 on a magazine to see the current societal standard of what my family and home are supposed to look like. Now it just shows up on social media everywhere you look, and it always seems to be picture perfect. That's all anyone seems to post, perfect pictures of perfect families enjoying perfect moments. Along with that, I think everyone's expectations of themselves have gotten so much higher. I mean, honestly, as a stay-at-home mom, every time I had a moment to open Facebook or Pinterest, I would walk away thinking, I'm not doing enough. And then I'd start second-guessing myself. I think that's what I started to overcome with those revelations in my own home. It's funny that these revelatory moments of mine happened on couches in two different homes, and I wonder why that is, but I don't have to wonder about the results of those moments. Shortly after I sat on the couch at the Castle Heights house and really noticed for the first time that I wasn't happy, even though I'd worked so hard to make everything look perfect, I had a conversation with a friend of mine. I was exhausted all the time, and I said to this friend, I feel like I'm just surviving at this point, and I'm not thriving. Once I was in the Carriage Square house and embracing the laughter and the messiness of my kids and not cleaning up all day long, I realized that it was up to me to flip that switch from surviving to thriving. It was just a mental shift, a readjustment in my way of thinking, like seeing my kid's fingerprint as kind of cute instead of a miserable mess. I actually made that particular mental shift after I had my Carriage Square revelation. It happened instantly, just like that, right after I made the decision to enjoy my kids instead of obsessing over making everything perfect. I looked down at those fingerprints, I was still on the couch, and suddenly they looked completely different. Then I got to thinking about the bigger picture. If I'm going to sit around and say I'm just surviving every day, well, guess what? When a big wave comes along suddenly, I won't be surviving. I'll be drowning. I mean, that's life. Life is never predictable. Life is never manageable. If your mindset is always, I'm just surviving, it seems to me that would wind up being your mindset for the rest of your life. You just get stuck in it. So I finally flipped the switch in my mind and I said, I have to choose to thrive, even in the pain, even when it's tough. And it was tough. While I was coming to this conclusion, we were right in the middle of our whole financial mess. We'd managed to escape just under the wire through that God-given $100,000 check, but we were still in trouble. The miracle of that breakthrough moment for me is that I didn't really let our situation get to me. I didn't wallow in it. I didn't allow it to dictate my happiness. I was scared, sure, but for now at least, we had our house, we had our kids, we had our health, and we were living this beautiful life together. And I told myself, I want to make all that count in this season because otherwise it's just going to be a waste.